inside Amazon's massive data center. Currently wondering what package to go for when entertaining thoughts for an unrivaled colossus for the internet age? Amazon Web Services is just the thing you need. Amazon Web is undoubtedly offering the computational horsepower that currently supports countless organizations. From Disney to GE, Netflix to BMW, Tinder to the CIA. Hello guys, welcome back to your favorite YouTube channel. Right before we delve into the video for today, please take out some time to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click on the bell button to get a notification of all our latest videos. In today's video, we are going to be stepping inside Amazon's massive data center to take a look around. Interestingly, this particular web service earns tens of billions of dollars in just a year. In case you've used the internet at all recently, you probably may have used Amazon Web Services without even being aware of it. But what is it? Where is it? And how does it all work? Join us now as we enter deep into the belly of this monstrous beast and take a quick tour inside an AWS data center. Data centers are naturally known to be associated with trucks, cardboard boxes, jet planes, vans, and warehouses. But Amazon prefers to brand its huge portfolio of data with such storage methods. They have monumental server farms, which are the very gut of the company's wild success referred to as the AWS, that is, the Amazon Web Services division. AWS kicked off at a 2003 meeting in the lake house of CEO Jeff Bezos. Back in the day, the company had just materialized from the dot-com bust with Jeff's fastest growing retailer having difficulty being set up and rolling out its own internal server capacity. Right out of the lake house meeting, a plan was proposed to get things done the best way possible. This scheme promised fast, scalable server infrastructure and was speedily acknowledged by a good number of enterprising young guns in the room as an excellent potential spin-off service Amazon could readily sell to other companies. Fast forward to today, Amazon Web Service rakes in a whopping 60% of all Amazon profits. This is about $50 billion in just one year. How is that even possible? Well, this is the easiest part for AWS. All they have to do is tackle other companies' tech problems in the cloud. For instance, if you're a startup in 2021, you no longer need to invest precious capital in vast banks of noisy, expensive servers and battalions of nerds to manage and maintain them all. All you really have to do is simply rent time on Amazon's gear instead. Or, simply put, rent time in the cloud. And if you're pretty busy, go on and hire more gear. If you're quiet, well, you could do with less gear. The real gear in question is jealously hidden from prying eyes by Amazon. Surprisingly, even clients are not permitted to poke around in the data centers they pay for. And, their addresses are securely stored and not made public. That's not all. There is something else you should know. For starters, take an archetypal site in Loudoun County, North Virginia as an example. AWS agreed to run at least 50 individual data centers in this region alone. This they do, covering several million square feet while at it. Believe it or not, Amazon has amazing plans of adding more capacity in Northern Virginia. Remarkably, it is believed that for a 100-acre site near Dulles Airport, the company reportedly just released a mouth-jarring $73 million for it. Now, on entry to one such AWS data center, let's say this enormous nondescript box next door to a pet resort in Sterling, the first thing that comes to your notice is that AWS has a thing or two for security. With high fences, several layers of intrusion detection systems, cameras, and guards, there is no doubt that security is a dominant concern for the firm. Very few people are given access to the area for very limited periods. And that's not all. There is also a need for two-factor authentication on at least two occasions when you visit the facility. If a visit is approved, which most times are extremely rare, guests are accompanied at all times by at least one sanctioned member of AWS staff. The next area is the perimeter layer. Once it is passed, the next stage of the data center is recognized as the infrastructure layer. This is actually where crucial systems like backup power, fire suppression, and most importantly, HVAC, or air conditioning, are located. To keep their position in the market, AWS data centers cannot be allowed to fail, ever, for any reason. With this in mind, water, power, telecommunications, and internet links are all designed with full redundancy. 
When you move past the infrastructure layer, you basically arrive at where the real magic happens, the so-called data layer. In this part of the facility, security is even tighter, with a reticent array of intrusion detection systems and even sterner review process for anybody going in or out. When something as minor as an internal door being left open slightly longer than usual happens, alarms are triggered. All access points are reinvigorated with multi-factor electronic control devices. If ever there was a data breach, virtual or physical, or if it was ever so much as suspected, the appropriate server is automatically disabled and shut down. To keep the facility updated and running smoothly, these security systems are audited throughout the year, according to a robust 2600-point checklist supervised by external bodies. These external auditors are known to have the liberty of requesting access to anything in the data center, from humdrum logs to security footage or even the cameras as well. AWS staff are sometimes invited at random from their shifts to talk about topics like the disposal of media, a process that's held to exacting and robust compliance metrics. Enough of that. Let's go on and take a look at the hardware itself. In the midst of all these up-to-date security systems, it may be very easy to forget that AWS data centers are essentially just mammoth banks of servers. Naturally, an average AWS data center is expected to hold anywhere from 50,000 to 80,000 servers, running on a combined 25 to 30 megawatts of power. It is assumed that AWS could quite effortlessly double this size and make even bigger data centers. Nonetheless, like every other thing Amazon is associated with, this service is all a question of finely calibrated scale. Renowned engineer and AWS Vice President James Hamilton told attendees at the company's 2016 reInvent conference that beyond a definite point, increasing the number of servers and racks per center no longer pulls down the incremental cost. In his own words, Hamilton said the data center size AWS usually goes with, at some point, the value goes down and the costs go up. And in our view, this is around the right number. Excitingly, James Hamilton is known to engage the term blast radius to underline the impact a failure might lead to in a much larger data center, hence the comparatively modest dimensions. Still, according to Hamilton, 80,000 servers are plenty, since it is designed to take about 102 terabytes of data each and every second. Suggestively, the engineers also implied that bandwidth within the center is wildly higher than that. Ever ready to preach about vertical integration, Amazon has made great paces in streamlining and perfecting the servers over the years. AWS, unlike other co-location server infrastructure providers, has a much clearer understanding of who will be using its hardware and the purpose of each offer. Removing this condition to be versatile has authorized the firm to create more efficient server architectures. When routine software procedures are interpreted on the hardware, this can graze nanoseconds off the processing time. And at the Amazon scale, this no doubt makes a huge difference. Originally, AWS bought servers as though they were from traditional suppliers. But over time, the company started producing its own single-depth servers, perfectly optimized for airflow in the Amazon Web Service buildings constructed to run AWS software. AWS has even created its own Graviton chipsets since procuring Israeli firm Annapurna. These Graviton chips, presently in their second generation with a third on the way, utilize the power-efficient ARM architecture. This symbolizes a break from long-term Amazon partner Intel and its 86 architecture. It is also said to give AWS clients about 40% better price performance, basically putting supercomputing-level power in the hands of conventional commercial users. In the area of storage, a single standard-sized rack in an AWS data center is assumed to hold about 11 petabytes. This is about a million gigabytes of data on 1,100 disks. Next is the AWS router. The AWS routers, which we most of the time refer to as the science kids, run custom ASICs or application-specific integrated circuits that support 128 ports with 25 gigabit ethernet connectivity. This deviates from the industry standard 10 GBE and 40 GBE networking speeds. But according to James Hamilton, it obviously offers economies of scale when joined together at 50 GBE. AWS also lays its own private undersea cables. But let's head back to our data center. Cooling is a major preference for AWS. To decrease the environmental impact, the firm particularly in Loudoun County, Virginia, set out to use as much recycled water as possible. 
This stops the firm from using all the valuable local drinking water, which would obviously be a serious nightmare. Loudon Water, the local utility, is happy to give this recycled water at a competitive rate. No doubt, AWS pays serious taxes here for the reclaimed water. Nonetheless, it's worth noting that AWS has successfully installed its own on-site water treatment systems somewhere else. This act prevents pipes from clogging up with mineral sediment, which in turn causes costly hassle and delay. And if you think this is absurd, the firm has even begun developing its own power substations. Interestingly, all those servers are said to use a fair bit of juice. Rather than waiting for slow-moving established power companies to create infrastructure to keep those racks running at all costs, AWS has managed to build electric substations for itself. Now, to the day-to-day -day operations. Day-to-day -day services within one data center are characterized by some ex-technicians as being similar to an ER department for computers. Unavoidably, with that much hardware, things get hooked up, stop pinging, or sometimes require a reboot. Fault finding and upgrading gear are then left to a small group of technicians who rigorously follow carefully planned playbooks that joins almost any imaginable occurrences. In the coming years, we can anticipate seeing more powerful AWS data centers come online. Early last year, a new AWS center opened in the Northern Virginia Territory, totaling about 1 million square feet in footprint. And this is just one area. That's it, guys. What do you think? Do these massive data centers deserve the credit they get for making modern life comfortable? Let us know your impressions and opinions in the comment section below.